Peterman. My name is Stephen Peterman, and as Tara said, I, I like to be the youngest snowbird. There could be uh, just spent two months here, you know, so. Uh, okay, so 12 years ago, on sort of a whim, uh, I decided to open up a community space just outside of downtown Atlanta. Uh, it started as many creative projects for all of you may have started. Uh, it was just a way for me to be creative and to interact with our community. Um, I always love to tell the story that we like put on an art show with all of our like co-students at the art school I was going to. Nobody sold any work. However, we did make $100 off the bar tips. And I was like, cool, starting a business. I wasn't even 21 yet. I couldn't even drink it. I was just, you know, taking that cash. Uh, so before I start, uh, I, I really was inspired to do a 10-year challenge for you guys here because I think this is so funny. So this is what we looked like when we opened uh, 12 years ago. Uh, there's like 18-year-old Sarah right there. I have socks and sandals on. <laughs> Uh, these are from Ikea. Anyway, just to give you a quick idea. Oh, this is my favorite part. We, we had plates of uh, peanut butter crackers always out in the, in the gallery. Uh, anyway, 10 years later, we have our beautiful library space uh, and Maddie here with really high socks. Uh, anyway, so this past year was the best year we've ever had for the sketchbook project. Um, but I am simultaneously uh, having this surreal moment of realization that this project only sort of exists inside of me and that I will always forever be the driving force for it. Uh, so I'm going to quickly tell you what the Sketchbook Project is and give you some stats. But we are a global crowdsourced participant funded art library. Today we have over 42,000 sketchbooks from 130 different countries from 30,000 individual artists from all seven continents. Uh, our library has over 280,000 checkouts, so that's physical books checked out, and our online library has 18 million digital books viewed. Um, because we allow anyone to be creative in our project, we have like dads from Kansas sitting next to students from Sudan on our shelf. Uh, we have books about overcoming cancer, sexual abuse, and of course, overcoming Donald Trump. Uh, we have... Uh, and this is all really special to us, and I love that about our community. But I, and I usually talk about that in all of the talks I give, but today I actually really want to talk about how I'm personally affected by the business. Um, okay, so I have a cycle. Uh, I feel the ends of the project coming, like I feel a little burnt out, and I feel like our money is running out. Um, but somehow I find a way to inspire myself. Maybe it's because, like, I gotta pay rent, uh, but I propel myself forward and I spend nights and weekends and every second of the day pushing myself forward and every time I figure it out. Uh, at least I think I do and our sales grow and the community engagement grows. Uh, I find myself feeling more free and less attached to the day to day. So I hire more staff members and I grow my overhead and I depend on them to make creative and operational decisions. And for a period of time we will grow and things will be great. So I will slowly extract myself from the day-to-day -day operations and I'll look for new opportunities, I'll think about new creative projects and I'll spend a lot of my time in St. Pete. Uh, so our sales start to slip uh, and I'll spend the majority of my energy for some reason trying to make my employees happy and less on the project. And I think about the core of our success is them. Uh, and so they need to be happy and they need to want to be here. And by finding them happiness, they will bring new and fresh ideas to my old and dusty ideas. Uh, so I get burnt out and they get burnt out. And being such a small company, I always tend to hire people that I just really like. They may not be the right person, uh, but I, we're like a four person team. So I have to spend all my days with them. So I really just want to you know, hang out. Um, so they may not be that, that right person, but uh, so they tend to, to leave after a time and feeling burned out. Some quick background. Uh, in 2009, after three years in Atlanta, my wife and I decided we wanted to move to New York. So we packed up the entire project uh, and we announced to our community, be a founding member of Brooklyn Art Library. Uh, that was like our, 
big tagline. Uh, and we ended up with 1,500 sketchbooks in our collection. Uh, we, I should have showed a photo of that because, again, I think I have socks and sandals on. And it's like we had these like mint green walls. It was real sad. Um, so yeah, we set up a loft in Brooklyn. Uh, we had lots of really cool events. Uh, we were in Red Hook, which is like still not cool. It was supposed to be the next cool place, but no one wants to go there. Uh, best part though, Moby came to an event uh, and he asked us to, ha to call him a cab. So I did my hashtag before Uber, which we always think is so <laughs> weird. Um, <laughs> So yeah, we were there for like eight months and then I had this idea, I'm, I'm like, I have an affinity for commercial spaces. I am constantly signing leases for things. Uh, I'll get more into that. Uh, but yeah, we, we moved to Williamsburg in 2010 and I think that was actually a really good idea because we quickly grew from 1,500 sketchbooks in our collection to within a year we had 13,000 sketchbooks in our collection. Uh, this is live footage of me dealing with the sketchbook project. I don't know why I did this, I just thought it was funny. Uh, but yeah, so we grew really, really fast. Uh, 2011, I had 12 employees. What all of them were doing, I really don't know. I now exist like in a much bigger scale with four people and we're like cool, like I come hang out in St. Pete, like it's all good. Uh, so I'm really not sure. I kind of feel like I just paid 12 people to be my friend. Uh, we traveled around the country. We brought our mobile library around. We went on a lot of road trips. I took them camping. Uh, I do think about all the time that no one ever taught us about taxes. I don't know if you guys know about this thing. Uh, so I like to blame taxes, probably not the, the only reason, but that is uh, what I like to call the extremely slow downfall of 2000 to two, well, uh, 2016. So, in reality, it was probably me. It was the cycle that I put myself in. I had a bunch of 22 to 25 year olds running this project, spending a lot of money on things I didn't need to spend money on. Uh, I thought these things were helping the business. They probably weren't. For example, uh, I bought a $10,000 bookbinding machine to start my own notebook line. Not to make notebooks for the sketchbook project, just like a completely separate thing. I mean, we had success with it. I don't think I ever made my money back, but it was like picked up by Princeton Architectural Press. And yeah, it was successful, but like, was that what I needed to spend money on? <laughs> Ask yourself that, okay. Uh, so I, I really always like to, to look, and, and I did have a lot of luck with the process. Uh, I started this project when everyone was like really excited about Facebook. There were, like weren't trolls, I don't think yet on it. Uh, you didn't have to pay for ads. Like everyone in our who liked us, like got to see what we were doing. It was like a 50% of our community organically saw it. Now it's about one and a half percent if you don't pay for it. Uh, everyone was really excited about crowdfunding. We actually started uh, the year before Kickstarter, uh, so we didn't even know what to call what we were doing. And then when Kickstarter started, it was like, oh, everyone's like, oh yeah, I know what you're doing. That's crowdfunding. That's cool. Uh, so like there was no stigma about it. Um, but what I never had to learn was how to build a real community. Uh, I didn't know how to grow returning customers. I went to art school for printmaking, like no business experience. Uh, I never knew how to gain people outside of our organic reach. Of course, it's really easy to look back now and realize that, but it actually took me this entire like four and a half year period until the like literal month that we were running out of money to sort of figure something out. So the story goes, it was late 2016. Uh, literally all of my employees had abandoned me at some point, some because I couldn't pay them anymore, whatever. Uh, but shit got real at one point. Uh, so I had one, um, I had one employee that didn't really speak to me. Like she just was like getting minimum wage and she would like do some random stuff for me, but it was like me, I was like a one man show. And something that I don't think people realize, which is sort of the downside of a small business, is that it's actually really lonely. So during like nine to five, unless you have a business partner, I have no one to like be excited with. I mean, of course, I can like talk to my employees, but there's sort of like a boundary that I have to keep. Um, and at some point, like my wife doesn't want to like lay in bed and like talk about sketchbook project any longer. Uh, and so we worked together for five years, and you know, decided for the better of our marriage. She got a different job. Uh, my original partner left uh, in 2013 
And so since then, I have really have not had anyone for more than two years. Uh, so this is sort of part of this cycle. Every few years, I find myself retraining people, reinventing what it means to be an employee of the Sketchbook Project. Uh, it's sort of like a melting clock of time. Uh, I, know, I had to throw in a surreal reference there for you, a Dolly reference. Anyway, so yeah, I truly have these weird uh, surreal moments where I'm like, I have done this before. I've literally had the same conversations every two years of my life for 12 years. And the wor even worse, and I love my employees and, and everything, so I don't mean this in a bad way, but I have to have the same conversations where they're like, I have an idea. And I'm like, oh, please tell me. And it's like four, you know, I've, this is the 17th time I've heard that. And I have to be like, cool, let's try it. Um, <laughs> So here I was, 2016, bottom of the bottom, uh, out of money, I got that one employee, but like I am working in the store, I am shipping out sketchbooks, I am doing our social media, I am literally a one person show, and I was super lonely, and this is not like what I wanted, this was not the creative project that I dreamed of for myself. So I felt like I needed a plan, I started needed to like create an exit strategy for myself. I feel a moral obligation, and I will forever, that I am the keeper of these books. So I'm not gonna just like, peace out, stick them in a storage unit, and like call it a day. Uh, so my plan uh, was to start a nonprofit. Uh, so that way I could have other people that care about it. Um, and I say that, and uh, yes, we are a for-profit business, but please know that like, not driving a Lamborghini around. Like, we're, we call ourselves an at profit company. Uh, everything goes back into it. We're very much a social aware company for this. So it was more like, hey, can we get grants so that we can fund this forever and ever, and that even if I get burnt out, there's like a team of people behind me that want to do this. Uh, so I was gonna do the nonprofit. I was gonna maybe find a partner. I literally like put uh, an ad up. Do you, I don't know if you guys know about the listings project uh, in New York. It's just sort of like a creative, list and I like put up there, I'm like looking for a partner to start a nonprofit to a pre-existing 10 year old organization. And I had people come and it, it, was, it was really interesting and, uh, and I um, thought that I could do one more year of the project. I thought I could pay off any business debt we had, everything was gonna go into that, then I was gonna create the nonprofit and move forward. Well, life didn't happen that way because of this cycle. Because I was forced to sit by myself in the store, it was like everything sort of became obvious what I was doing wrong. And so with the help of like friends and family, I literally had this moment where I like put up the 2018 project. So this was uh, 2017 at this point, And I showed it to my sister and she's like, is this it? Like, this is what you're doing? And I was like, you're right. I like revised everything in one night and I like put it back together and I looked at the 2011 project on uh, Internet Archive, which is always good to look at your past websites and rewrote it almost exactly the same with some like updated design. Um, and it worked and we had a really great month. Uh, and then we had a BuzzFeed video about us that got 12 million views, I think we're at now. It was like this crazy time. So again, here I am starting this entire process over. So I'm hoping this is the last cycle at that point. <laughs> so I hire a team of people again. And honestly, these are my, this was my favorite group. Like we were really good friends. Uh, they all did work really hard. Uh, I don't know if they're the right people or not. I don't know if anyone was even around long enough to, to know that, but um, things got worse. Uh, I got burnt out again. I started to look for other things. Again, St. Pete, what is going on? Stop making me come here. Uh, it's so cold in New York. Uh, anyway, so they, they leave and I'm alone and the ambulance comes and the project's on its last breath and it's like, all right, this is it. And this is, I'm talking about November 2018, like two and a half months ago, right? Uh, so anyway, of course, again, uh, people leave and I'm forced to think about it and be involved and be creative again and reinvent the project. And yeah, so best month ever. Uh, actually, December, we doubled the best month we had ever done. Uh, so the year ended up being the best year we've ever had because of that reason. Uh, so yeah, I don't know. Where does that lead me? What happens now? 
You guys, anyone? No. Um, <laughs> so I, I have this moment that I realized that this creative project has taken this crazy turn. It became a business, and uh, because of, for whatever reason, it only exists sort of inside of me. So I've been thinking actually a lot about this these days. Uh, I've had ideas come and go. I have this like, I had an idea that I'm like, I'm going to find someone. I'm going to find this like person. I'm going to mentor them and grow them. And they're going to like think like me. And it's kind of like sounds conceited to say it that way. But I was just like, I'm going to find someone that can think that way. But you know what? I think anyone like that's doing their creative project or like doesn't want to listen to me uh, train them all the time. So uh, then I'm like, I could do this for the rest of my life, right? I'm 33 years old. What I got like. Seven, no, I'm not going to live to 103, I don't know. <laughs> 60 years left, is it really that bad to run your own global art library? No, but it, when it's hard, it's a huge struggle to have that on your shoulders uh, when you're not making money and you want to be doing something else, when you want to start a family or buy a house, uh, you know, and you just want to be creative in new ways. It's really burdensome. So. What does that leave me? What is the middle ground? How do I learn to be a better manager, a better leader, reinvent some, the same creative idea I have been doing for 12 years? Um, so yeah, it's a surreal moment that when I was 20 years old, I started the space. I was just happy to make $100 off the bar tips. I was happy to sh that people were upset. I mean, sorry, I was happy that people showed up and I was upset when people did not show up. Uh, <laughs> I was beyond excited when we got our first write-up, which was in Yahoo Daily Wire. Uh, does not exist anymore. Uh, I remember sitting in my childhood home uh, after a year of doing the project, and I was on the phone with my uh, other co-founder at the time, and I was like, we can't do this for another year. And now it's 11 years later. Uh, so I'll probably make it another decade. Uh, when I spoke to Tara literally in November and reached out to her, I was like, I'm turning this into a nonprofit. Like, I got to do this plan, which is still part of the plan. I'll get to that. Uh, but then we had this best month ever. And this is the joy and the burden of running a small business. I can truly never predict where it will be next, uh, especially when it's arts related. Uh, I don't know what life will bring me. I don't know what our community will want as the internet shifts, as people's needs online and the way they want to share shifts. It's always different. Uh, but I need to keep pushing, I need to keep re reinventing myself and finding a way to be a better creative person. I had this really eye-opening moment, uh, and I wish I couldn't find the exact quote, but it was in Fast Company, uh, and it was someone saying that your business is actually just ephemeral if it can't exist without the founder. Uh, that was my last slide anyway, it's fine, because I just like kept writing after that. Um, so uh, if it can't exist me, what is it? What does that mean? The sketchbook is like who I am. Uh, I am not sure I can have ever escape that. I'm not sure that I want to escape that. I literally have a sketchbook project tattoo on my arm. Uh, I don't know why I did that. Um, <laughs> so I don't have an answer, and I'm still trying to figure that out. Uh, my staff and I always joke all the time that it's uh, when we're stressed at work, we're like, it's literally the sketchbook project. We're not saving lives. Hopefully we're inspiring people, but that's exactly what it is. It's an art project. I started in my early 20s and I still get to do it. Uh, take a look at your own creative project. So whether it's like a burden of money or stress, or where do you want to bring it next? Or in my case, uh, what do I do with the 42,000 people's deepest, darkest secrets that I have to deal with? It's like, don't stress about it, because it's just about being creative. In the end, I think the lesson that I learned is maybe this is as good as it gets. And don't get me wrong, nothing is bad. <laughs> uh, I get to run an art library. I get to talk to all of you. Uh, my wife is here. I have a dog that has more Instagram followers than I do. Um, I write the captions, by the way. Uh, she is a dog. Um, <laughs> but maybe in the end, this surreal uh, moment is realizing that this is actually really great. And it doesn't matter if I do this forever, if I start a nonprofit, or if my eventual demise is being buried under 42,000 sketchbooks, uh, which may happen. Uh, because here's the thing, I'm actually really happy when I get to work for the project, when I get to be creative. When I disrupt the day to do weird creative projects with my staff, 
this whole thing was based on the idea that anyone could be creative and it stems from my own artwork. So why not just go with it? Uh, just keep being creative uh, while simultaneously uh, seeking a business plan along the way. Um, so I don't think this talk is about you know, following your dreams or being able to accomplish anything you want, which you probably can, but that's not what I'm trying to say. <laughs> it's actually more about acceptance it's about realizing that I spend my time seeking something that I probably already have. How much of your life do you spend wondering what you could be doing? Uh, the energy that I put into being anxious about how I could be a, creative, a better creative person is energy that I'm wasting while simultaneously seeking that energy. Uh, so this is a project I started young and I'm so grateful for that because when I was 20 years old, I did not give a shit. Like, I'd sign a lease, like, it's cool. Like, I have no repercussions to any of this. Uh, but the difference between now and then is that I, I care and I, I think about it more. Um, but I, I think now that I just started to view the project as a job and sometimes as a burden, that I let myself make poor decisions for it. Uh, and I always find myself telling people that the Sketchwork project should not exist. I was talking to people about this last night, and it's true. I am so lucky to be able to run a 12-year-old art project that makes money, employs creative people, uh, that allows me to hang out with all of you, but it does. Uh, and what I'm trying to say is that I think I need to accept that this project is just my creative outlet. Just like the 30,000 individual artists use this as their creative outlet, uh, but when it all comes together, these books are the story of my life. When my kids are old, they're gonna like sit, or maybe my grandkids are gonna be like, my grandparents lived atop of an art library in Brooklyn. Uh, and they drove around in a tiny vintage bookmobile and shared artwork with the world. Uh, and I guess I need to embrace the surrealness of my life. Uh, so I've let this con cycle control me for so long and I'm not doing that anymore. So what if, uh, the next time I feel ready for a creative challenge, I do it. But I also trust my gut and the decisions that I make for the sketchbook project. Uh, I just have not wanted this project to be about me for so long uh, that I've like kept myself out of it and actively. But I think that was a mistake. I think I need to embrace that this project lives inside of me. For some reason, I'm here to be the keeper of all of these stories and antidotes and travel guides and poems and secrets and so I just need to push forward. I need to find a way to feel alive and reinvent the creativity along the way. Thank you. Hi. Um, I, you, like, you reiterated the idea that you had to become comfortable with the, with the project living inside of you. Um, like, have you ever like approached it more from like, maybe you kind of happened upon this thing that is important to like an incredible amount of people and you're really, it's important that you be the steward of it and that like, uh, you know, like, like the center being the project and. Yeah. Like. Yeah, and definitely. And I think that's like where I'm trying to find my place in all of this because it's just become obviously bigger than myself. Uh, it's, um, and I'm still like genuinely surprised when people come and are like, this was, a, you know, meant so much to me for this reason. And I'm so like in it uh, because I literally live above the library. That's not a joke. Uh, my grandkids will talk about that. Uh, but I, yeah, I think just um, it's, it's good to, to step out. But yeah, I definitely think that, I don't know, that's my thing. I just got to go with it. I just got to like, help make it happen. I don't know if I have a choice whether it's about coming out of me or I'm the steward of it. Uh, I think I'm just here to, to go with it. But I think what I need to do is find how, uh, because I think it's successful when I put my creative energy into it because there's been a, you know, this cycle that every time I step away, it doesn't, because it shouldn't exist because it's an art project and we need money because Brooklyn's rent is not cheap and I make people pay once and then I keep their books for 12 years and that's it and so I need to like sustain a, keep it sustainable and so I still have to do that and put myself into it and I think I just need to be creative about it and just have fun because those are always the best ideas. 
Hi, I'm from, it's on. I don't know, it's pretty loud anyway. So I'm from the Bronx, so hi Brooklyn. Oh, hey. um, why were you so afraid to surrender yourself creatively to this project? Uh, I, I guess it's just, I, I mean, I did this when I, I did it when I was 20 and being like through the years having such ups and downs, it's just, it did become a burden at, at a few points in my life. Uh, and it's like, there's been terrifying moments where like my wife and I both worked for the project. We were like running out of money, but we had like 30,000 sketchbooks we had to deal with. And like, I, I just, it's like, what do we do? This is so much pressure uh, that um, it, it became that a burden more than anything. But I think in the end, there is a pathway that I can be creative, be a part of it, but I can keep it going for long term. Um, I don't think until sort of becoming a, a full grown adult, I had a real plan. Like I sort of was just like, just going with it. Um, and so I think that that was probably self-inflicted burden on myself, but uh, I do feel really like invigorated by it these days and I'm finding a way to balance all of my creative needs within it and um, just being really more bossy to my employees, I think, is what I need to do. Hey, um, so how does the Sketchbook project make money? And with that, I kind of mean like how can everyone here or myself support the project? Yeah. So yeah, we are uh, what we like to call participant funded. So by buying a blank book from us, uh, which are $30 for the regular one, and then $65 for the one that we actually scan and put up on our website that has the 18 million views, uh, you are funding the entire operation. We do not get outside funding. I do not have a really rich dead grandparent. Like we started this from nothing and grew it up from that. Uh, so only from participants and so that's like 95 percent of our income and then the rest comes from like retail sales in our local space um and then we do like we have like sponsored uh places will bring us out but that really covers our costs so again mostly if you want to support us or if you want to support your own creative process and do the project uh yeah you can get on our line uh, online we brought five to sell uh Sarah brought them for us and that's what she took, so blame her. No, just, that was very nice of her. Uh, so only five lucky people can get them. Uh, but um, online you can use the, we have a coupon code, new year, new project, 2019, I think, and it's 20% off. <laughs> hey. Hey. Um, so I moved down here from Brooklyn a year ago. Cool. So would recommend but um, anyway maybe this is not that much of a creative question but can you speak a little bit about your digital tagging process for because yeah. I do feel like that is a way you help make the project bigger than yourself when people are able to search through stuff yeah yeah and that sort of stuff is like my favorite part of it and so those of you who don't know uh, the artist gets to catalog their own book so everything in our database is crowdsourced by the people. Uh, so there are, I don't know, 30,000 individual words that you can search by, but it also searches artist bios, locations. Uh, so basically just like you could search like a tag on social media, you can search that on our system and on our digital library and uh, a lot of books will come up. It's we're really big on embracing the randomness and like not judging a book by its cover because some of the most amazing books do not do crazy actually the best books don't do no, i'm just kidding uh there's some great amazing books that are just like simple and you would never know uh, but then there's also this other side of it where you're like people have these rules in their head where you're like i want to see a dog book and it's like i search dog and it's like there's no dogs in this book and it's like it's cool it's fine that's not the point i think the point is we've had so many like serendipitous uh experiences where people would like always people always love the random book we always give you the book you search for and the one to the right of it uh, and that's always everyone's favorite or it's like their childhood best friend like no joke people finds like the craziest connections to people in it and that is like such the coolest part about it to me um so yeah 
uh, we have a lot of hesitation at first when people come to our space. They're like, I can't just point to that giant book that I think looks really interesting. And we're like, if you want to be boring, sure. But like, if you want to like go with it and like search a bunch of terms and like see if you can find something like really specific or see if you can find an artist from some obscure country because we have so many different countries that really what we push people to do. Um, but there's 22,000 books on our digital library. You don't even need to create an account. You can search for free uh, on sketchbookproject.com. So play around with the search system and uh, it's a little slow. It's really old. Just go with it. <laughs> Uh, with your love for signing leases, are you going to bring a satellite library to St. Pete? Uh, so I would love, no, I, I was here for a really long time with that bookmobile. I like stretched that out for real long. Uh, and we're gonna hope to, we are hoping to keep doing that. Uh, I am, however, uh, opening up a general store in St. Pete uh, in the summer. I signed a lease. <laughs> Like I said, I sign a lot of leases, uh, so that's happening. I don't know anything about doing this, and I literally was like pitching, I wanna like pitch this to like, I'm looking for people who wanna help me do it. Just like marketplace, local people. Uh, there's like the honey guy, I don't even know if he's, he might be here, I don't know. I love, bought honey from him. Like I just want it to be this like uh, really um, localized market. So if anyone wants to help out with that, please let me know, seriously. <laughs> uh, but we're gonna keep coming back. The problem is the library is a pitfall of money losing. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it doesn't make money because it's a horrible business model. Um, so probably won't open up long-term spaces, but I have talked to some local places about doing long-term pop-up libraries, and I hope to do that. But yeah, I mean, I. Uh, I love spending time here. I'm like forcefully making my wife come down here and spend time here. Uh, so hopefully we'll be around a little bit more, but I'm, I'm enjoying this like dual life as long as I can do this. <laughs> so you mentioned having people's deepest, darkest secrets in these books. Yeah. Um, it's kind of a two-parter. What's the craziest shit you've ever read? And has anything scared you enough to like call the cops? Uh, so yeah, uh, there is some crazy shit for sure. Uh, people use this for very deep therapy that I cannot get involved in. But I mean, I've had. I mean, like I think the most. Like I've just like every once in a while, like our staff and I will play this game of just like pulling it off the shelf, and it's like, oh god, like. I, and I'm really glad that people have that outlet for this. Um, I think that uh, a story I tell all the time, which is sort of answering your question, but um, we had an exhibition in Australia, thanks to MailChimp, which is also a Creative Mornings Yay! partner. Uh, they helped us go to Australia, and we did an exhibition at the University of Melbourne, and we went all the way there, and my wife and I crate shipped 1,500 sketchbooks there, and we met this woman in her like 70s and she did the sketchbook project and then went back to undergrad art school because she was so inspired to be an artist after doing the project. And that's like my favorite story always. It's like that to me is like, that's so cool. Like, I don't know, grandma's going back to art school. Um, calling the cops, no. Uh, we, I have a very, I don't have a line. I let, you know, we accept everything. We have an adult content filter. Uh, there have been three books that have ever been pulled out of the collection. Uh, I will not talk about what they are, but you can imagine just the worst of the worst. Uh, and um, I think all of you would agree on me pulling them out. Not censoring, just like, get your shit together. <laughs> I have no response to that. One more question. Oh, but you were just like, I made eye contact with you and now I feel like I can't. Not. Hello, uh, I'm curious if present you uh, would have any nugget of advice that would, you would send back in time to lease signing younger you that might be relevant for other people kind of in that same phase, speaking yeah. about like the challenges that are ahead of 
some of us. Yeah. Honestly, the least sighting, I think, was the best thing I ever did. And <laughs> the first one. Uh, I, I literally, we stood outside the space. It was like the worst space. I don't know why we were like so obsessed with it, but we like waited out front and I don't know, they were like, go print out your credit report and we'll give you a lease. And we're like, cool. So uh, don't regret that ever. People told me not to do it. People told me you shouldn't open an art space. I still did it. It was really hard for a really long time. I, you know, I did not make money from this for I didn't really even make significant money for this for like five years. I mean, it takes a really long time. Uh, I, you know, had other jobs and figured out how to do it and, you know, ate a lot of tacos at home. I wasn't a ramen person. I was more taco kit kind of guy. But um, uh, I would say to learn your, your tax laws. <laughs> uh, that has been... I mean, the real quick story is just like, we made a little bit of money and it was great. Uh, so in 2009, we had like 3,500 people sign up for the project, but then between 2010 and 11, we had 28,000 people uh, sign up for the project. Uh, I was under the impression as a 24 year old at the time that I just had to pay myself for what I took, right? Not true on an LLC, which is so obvious now to me, but no, I paid for all the profit of the business. So yeah, paid for that for about six years of <laughs> payment plans to the IRS, and yeah, they really want their money. Um, uh, so yeah, just really being up on that, I think was, would have helped me so much. Having like a financial person to, I am not, I'm still not a financial person. Like I kind of get it, but like, now I just have accountants that I'm like not afraid to talk to and uh, you know, that just know what they sort of understand my business. So I'm just like, yeah, charge me whatever you want. It's cool. Like, uh, and I think that is really important or finding a partner uh, who, who understands that a lot more would have been really helpful to us. We were both super creative people. And when my wife helped out, she was, she's really a creative person. We were all like these visual, like, yeah, we have great ideas, but like don't know how to like, I like just made a budget for like the first time in like 12 years. Uh, I, don't, I probably won't follow it, but uh, not buying book binding machines anymore. Uh, but I am signing leases in St. Pete, so I'm no different. It's all the same.